could you speak about uh, consciousness and the energetic connection between ourselves and Gaia a bit more? You started. Uh, could you give some more examples of that? Real world examples of how we could. Yeah, I mean, uh, first of my experience, I, I think you know I was in Japan uh, on the third of March, uh, the eleventh of March this year, when the earthquake struck. And I'd been speaking to the Japanese before then. I've been doing a lot of work in Japan and working with the ancestors of the present Japanese people, the Jomon people, and even further before that, the Lemurian people. And the Lemurians and the Jomon had an incredibly profound, harmonious relationship with Gaia. Mm -hmm. And from all that we know of them, you know, mystically as well as archaeologically, they lived in balance with Gaia for thousands upon thousands of years. And to do that, you have to, that has to be more than at a physical level. That has to be an emotional and a mental and a spiritual level. And you can only do that if you really do understand the oneness that we and Gaia are truly co-evolutionary partners and that what happens to us happens to Guy, what happens to Guy happens to us. Mm -hmm. And I've been speaking to the Japanese just before the, the, the earthquake and saying, you guys, you know, when you become stuck, you've actually lost that relationship with Guy, or at least it's become very peripheral to your lives. And after, having been on the 10th floor of an apartment block in Tokyo where everything shook, and it shook for a long time, PG. It wasn't just the, the biggest earthquake the Japanese had ever encountered. It was also one of the longest. And it came on wave, on wave, on wave. And what I could feel as I, I tuned with Gaia through this was that she was becoming unstuck. And she was showing the way, in essence, for the Japanese people to become unstuck. And literally, it was only the day after that the Japanese Prime Minister, who was then called Miyoto Khan, came on TV and said to everybody, you know, in the middle of all this grief with, with not just the earthquake, but the horrendous tsunami, and at that point the Fukushima uh, nuclear plant, uh, what was happening there, had not really been fully appreciated, that with all of this, we are going to look back on this moment as a rebirth for Japan. Mm. And it was very much a rebirth of their traditional relationship with Gaia. And that is what's happening, because I've been back to Japan since, and instead of reacting and retreating into fear and seeing this as something separate from them, I think what's really, really important, that in my experience, the more gracefully we can go through the shift of consciousness, the more can Gaia. Mm -hmm. And there will be earth changes, probably, but they will be more graceful if we, as you said earlier, we can see that we and she are one. And secondly, if we can honour her and work with her and envisage with her this amazing new way of being, that instead of seeing her as something passive and separate and certainly in the appalling way we treated her over the last period of time, we heal our relationship with her. Mm -hmm. And we can do that in the most simple of ways. I mean, I was out in the garden this morning and we grow all our own veg and we've got the most amazing harvest of, of fruit this year, mm -hmm. um, which I'm now in the process of freezing and cutting myself to bits as I try and do it. <laughs> but it's, it's wonderful. And just on a very simple level, being in nature, being with her, tuning to her, and then what my experience has been over many years is the the unseen realms of Gaia, the elemental realms mm -hmm. and the devic realms mm -hmm. begin to introduce themselves and you enter into an incredibly wonderful relationship with this amazing being that we call Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. 